Hi, my name is Paul Young. I'd like to tell you about one of my favorite characters in the Bible. His name was Elijah. The Bible says Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly. God heard that man's prayers. This time he prayed that it would not rain. Now, that's kind of a strange prayer, but God heard his prayer. And the farmers who plowed their crops got no rain. Clouds of dust, nothing much grew. Trees would dry up. And for three and a half years, no rain, because the man of God prayed. And then God fed him every day. He was down hiding from Queen Jezebel and King Ahab, and he would stay down by the river and drink the water. And God fed him miraculously sent ravens every morning, every evening, give him meat and bread. And wonderful display of God's power. And then God sent him to stay with a widow, and God provided for her and for Elijah and for the widow's son. Continual, a continuous miracle there. And then the little boy got sick and died. And Elijah got down and prayed. There's an old saying that says, while there's life, there's hope. Well, he's dead. Looks like there's, it's past hope. But Elijah prayed. And God answered that man's prayers and raised that little dead boy to life again. And Elijah was able to hand this little boy back to his mom. Don't you know she was happy? Her little one son, only son, dead, is raised again. And man, the hand of God was on Elijah. And three times, Elijah called down fire from heaven, prayed for fire. And three times, God listened to the voice of Elijah and sent fire from heaven. One time to burn up a sacrifice, turn Israel back to God. You remember when the, you had the contest with the prophets of Baal? Uh, they built their altar and put their sacrifice on them. They're supposed to just pray, not put your fire on. No fire came. Elijah prayed, and the fire came and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones of the altar, the dust, the water, an amazing display of God's power. And Israel turned back to the Lord. And then later, God, uh, God sent fire at Elijah's request twice. Each time burned up 50 enemy soldiers. Hey, here's a man of God. Now, Elijah had a servant. Sometimes people think, we ought not to have any kind of servants anymore. Uh, that's just too lowly. All men are created equal, so we shouldn't have somebody. Well, Elijah, Elijah did have a servant. His name was Elisha. Elisha would pour water on the hands of Elijah. Maybe Elisha uh, helped him. Elijah maybe had dirty hands like I do. Uh, and he would pour water on Eli Elijah's hands. A servant. He had been a successful farmer, but now he sees the power of God on this man of God, Elijah, and he's, he, he left that other stuff behind, the job and the money, I suppose, and now he's been like a servant, and he's learning. He's watching Elijah. He's learning. And now it's time for Elijah to leave earth. And he told Elisha, you stay here. Elijah said, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to stay with you. And then a little later, Elijah said, you stay here. Elisha said, I'm going to stay with you. A little while later, Elijah said, Elisha, you stay here. Elisha said, I'm going to stay with you. Well, they got down to the Jordan River. And Elijah had to cross the river. Elisha's watching.
Elijah took his coat, his mantle off, came and hit the water. Here's Elijah uh, doing a wonderful miracle, and Elisha's watching. And when he hit the water, God caused the waters of the Jordan River to part. There's a wall of water on one side, a wall of water on the other side, and Elijah walked through the middle on dry ground. Here he is with his mantle over his shoulder. And Elijah, Elisha, his servant, he's watching all this. He's seen the power of God on this man of God. But now He's been told, Elisha has been told that Elijah's going to have to leave. He's going he's to be going to heaven. And now, just before Elijah leaves, he said to Elisha, he said, ask what I'll do for you. Hey, that's a pretty big uh, offer. Ask what I'll do for you. You remember King Herod said that to a girl. He said, ask whatever I want. You remember she had danced and he liked it so much. He said, I'll give you whatever you want up to the half of the kingdom. The silly girl, she blew a chance to get a wonderful blessing from the king. She was, motive, she was uh, influenced by her wicked mother and she asked to kill John the Baptist, greatest man who'd ever lived. Uh, God made an offer to, Eli uh, excuse me, to Solomon. God came to Solomon one night in a dream and said, ask what I'll do for you. Solomon didn't waste it. He asked, made a good request and God was pleased and gave him wisdom like he asked for him. Gave him riches and other blessings besides. Now Elijah does the same thing for Elisha. He said, ask what I'll do for you. And Elisha was ready for him. He said, I want, I'll put it in my own words, I want twice as much as what you have. Man, here's a guy who's called down fire from heaven three times. Here's a man who's prayed and raised a dead boy to life again. Here's a man who's been fed supernaturally uh, for a good long a while out by himself. And then later three people are fed supernaturally. Here's a man who can pray and stop the heavens, stop the rain from coming for three and a half years. And now his servant says, I want a double portion of your spirit. Elisha, are you being greedy? Are you being too bold? Are you being brash? And Elijah is kind of taken aback. He says, you've asked a hard thing. Man, this is big, what you've asked for. He said, if you see me when I'm taken up to heaven, you'll get it. If you don't see me, you're not going to get it. It wasn't long after that. You remember, Elijah had said, you stay here and I'll go yonder and you stay. Eli Eli Elisha would not uh, leave Elisha. Elijah. So finally, something did part him. You know what it took to part him? Chariots of fire and horses of fire. Suddenly, these horses of fire from heaven come to take Elijah away. And finally, Elisha has to step back and it parts Elijah from Elisha. And the Bible says, Elijah was taken up to heaven in a whirlwind. And now, Elijah is gone. Elijah, let me, let me review. Elijah has been a man of God, serving God for years. And for some of, the, some of that time, a good bit of the time, Elisha has been watching. His faith has been increased. Watching the man of God. When you see the works of God, it'll help encourage your faith. 
It's good to read books about what God has done for other men of God and women of God now and in, in days gone by. The works of the Lord are great, sought out of those who have pleasure in them. And now Elijah is gone and Elisha has seen what God has done for Elijah. And he asked God to do the same thing for him. Oh, not just the same thing, twice as much. That reminds me of the Bible verse, Psalm 8110. Open thy mouth wide and I will fill it. Not just open your mouth and ask for a little bit. Open your mouth wide and I will fill it, the Lord says. You know, that's a command. It's a wonderful offer, but it's more than just an offer. It is a command. Open your mouth wide. And so, remember what Elijah said. He said, if you see me when I go up, you'll get this big request. But if you don't see me, too bad. You're not going to get it. Now, was God pleased to let Elisha have what he asked for? He was. God did give Elisha his request. He did see Elijah taken up into heaven. If you'll ch check the record, you'll see that Elisha worked about twice as many miracles as Elijah did. Different people have different counts. My count was Elijah worked about You'll see about 12 clear supernatural uh, deeds in his life. I counted up for Elisha, and it was about 25 or more. That's more than twice as much. Open thy mouth wide and all fill it. You see, Jesus said, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. And so God sent a, a whirlwind. That's an amazing thing. About 20-some years ago, a, a tornado came through our little town. Just went roaring right up the main street in town, destroying buildings, killed one man, destroying houses. Just millions and millions of dollars worth of damage. And so Elijah went out in a great display of God's power. And here Elijah sees it. I guess he's trying to hold his robes so they don't blow away. But Elisha sees Elijah go up into heaven and so in his ministry, you will see about twice as many miracles or more that Elisha did compared to Elijah. Now, there's a big lesson for us. That command, open your mouth wide and I'll fill it, was not just a command for Elijah. That's a command for us. It wasn't given specifically to Eli uh, just El Elisha. Open thy mouth wide and I will fill it. Let me give you a couple of other verses that encourage my faith. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Hey, we can have a heart that's perfect toward the Lord. Uh, one that's completely surrendered. We want to do whatever the Lord says. Now, I know that we're not sinlessly perfect and we're not as good as Jesus, but we can live a life day by day of obedience, no willful known sin in our lives. And if we do sin, immediately confess it, keep ourselves surrendered, cleansed by the blood of Jesus, and we can, we can have a heart perfect toward the Lord. And when God finds someone like that, he'll show his power. Listen again. 2 Chronicles 16, 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. And 
That's what God did for this man. Can you imagine all the dust and debris uh, flying by in this whirlwind? Uh, but there's something bigger, better than that happening. The power of God is coming on this man, a servant. A servant to Elijah. And so immediately, God's power is, began to be displayed. Let me show you what happened. You remember, Elijah had just parted the Jordan River, and now Elisha comes down to the river. He's alone now. Elijah has gone. Well, I say he's alone. Well, he appears to be alone, but he's not really alone, is he? God's spirit is with him. He comes down to the water. He had picked up Elijah's mantle that had fallen. He raises it up. And he comes down with it, hits the water. And he said, where's the Lord God of Elijah? And suddenly, just like the waters had done for Elijah, they parted for Elisha as well. A wall of water on one side, a wall of water on the other side, just like God had done for Moses crossing the Red Sea, just like God had done for Joshua, Israel crossing through the flooded Jordan River when the waters parted and piled up in a great pile. Now they do for Elijah, now they do again for Elisha. And he walks through on dry ground. And then just miracle after miracle. I made a list of some of the miracles. He parted the, the waters, the, then the waters in Jericho were healed. And then some boys were making fun of Elisha, making fun of his bald head. And uh, hey, God put a curse on those boys at the word of Elisha and 42 boys were, were mauled by some bears. And then they, the people of Israel were in trouble, and God gave a victory, a uh, supernatural military victory, and gave water to the uh, army that was about to die of thirst. And then you remember the widow uh, who had two sons. Um, God multiplied the oil for the widow, just miracle, fed a hundred men with just a little food. Uh, a pot that had poison in it, in it was made edible. Uh, the leprous man, Naaman, was cured. Just many, many miracles. I count about 25 or more. Not only did Elisha do about twice as many miracles as Elijah, but some of the major miracles that Eli Elijah did, Elisha did way beyond, maybe du double. For example, Elijah raised one person to life again. Elisha raised two. Elijah had a chariot of fire. Elisha, you remember the story? A whole mountain full of horses of fire and chariots of fire. Elijah called for a famine, a judgment to turn the people back to God. Elisha, during his ministry, had three famines. Elijah's famine lasted three and a half years. One of Elisha's lasted twice as long, seven years. You see, we think of miracles as, as healings and things like that, and most of the miracles I think in the Bible were. But some miracles were miracles of judgment. Sometimes it takes judgment to turn people back to God. That's really the big thing. Uh, healing often turns people to Jesus. Sometimes judgments do as well. Hey, if a famine helps people get everlasting life and turn from their sin and turn to, turn to God in repentance, hey, it's worth it. Two, Elijah sustained a widow and her son, fed them supernaturally. Elisha sustained a widow and two sons. Not only that, he fed a whole army supernaturally. Another time, he uh, fed a whole city supernaturally, the city of Samaria. Um, Elijah destroyed two groups of 50 with fire. 
<laughs> Elisha did better still. He captured a whole army. Didn't have to kill anybody. Captured them all. Uh, you remember when he blinded them. And then he gave them sight again. You see, God is just putting his stamp of approval on this man's faith. Miracle after miracle. Of all the people in the Bible, uh, Elisha is one is one of my favorites. I told you at the beginning, Elijah is one of my favorites, and he is. But Elisha is even more. Let me give you one more little story. And this comes right at the end of Elisha's time here on earth. He's an old man. He's on his deathbed. I, I, I don't know what he looked like. I imagine he's a little skinny little old man. And the king comes in. And his hand is maybe trembling. And the king comes in. The king's not really a very godly man, the king of Israel. But this old man who's seen God at work during his long, I think, long ministry, he said to the king, he said, shoot an arrow. And he shot, the king shot an arrow. And Elijah, Elisha said, that's the era of victory over Syria. And then Eli Elisha said, smite some arrows on the, on the ground. And the king got down and he hit. And he hit. And he hit again three times and stopped. And the old man, Elisha, He's angry. Can you imagine? He's an old, frail man. And he says, you should have hit five or six times. Now you're just going to defeat Syria one time. You'd have smitten five or six times. You could have completely destroyed them. You see, uh, Elisha wasn't satisfied just to have some victory. He wasn't satisfied to have some blessings. Open thy mouth. Wide, and I will fill it. You see, when we don't open our mouths wide, we're missing God's blessing. Yeah, we're also being disobedient. You see, God loves this world. Jesus has died on the cross to purchase salvation for the whole world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God has purchased salvation. Yeah, but how are people going to get it? unless we bring it to them in power. It's not enough just to bring the gospel. We need to bring it to them in the power of the Holy Spirit. You say you'll receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you'll be witnesses to me. Yeah, we, can be, we can witness to people and help bring people to the Lord Jesus in power. How? By God's Spirit. Now, how can you have the fullness of the Holy Spirit? Well, every Christian has God's Spirit. How do I know that? Listen to the Word of God, Romans 8, 9. If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. If you don't have God's Spirit, you're not one of God's children. But are all Christians filled with the Holy Spirit? No, they're not. How do I know that? Well, just look around for one thing. But I have a Bible answer too. Ephesians 5, 18 says... Be filled with the Spirit. You see, God would not command us to be filled with the Spirit if all of us were automatically filled with the Spirit anyway. Be filled with the Spirit. Well, how can I be filled with the Spirit? Jesus gives the answer. Listen to Luke eleven thirteen. Jesus said, How much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? It's a gift. Jesus said to an immoral woman, the woman, the Samaritan woman at the well, I say she was immoral, but she turned to Jesus. And Jesus said to her, if you knew what God wants to give you, and you knew who you're talking to, you'd have asked, and he'd have given you living water. Now what was he talking about? He's talking about the Holy Spirit. He said later, if anybody, if anybody thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes on me from within his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. 
This spake he of the spirit which they that believe on him should receive. And here this old man had seen God bless greatly many times. Let me tell you quickly one more story. Even after Elisha was dead, God is still happy to put his stamp of approval on this man's faith. Elisha is dead and buried. The people of Israel were having war again. They defeated Syria three times, but it was not enough to get a complete victory because the guy didn't really have enough faith. He'd only hit three times instead of five or six times. Now, there was a couple of soldiers who are burying their friend who's died in the battle. And all at once, off in the distance, here come a bunch of Syrian soldiers. And these guys don't have time to dig a hole. Well, there's Elisha's grave, and somehow they can get in. Maybe it was a cave. I, I'm drawing it like a, a hole right now. But uh, So they decide to dump the dead body in Elisha's grave. I don't know exactly what it looked like. Let's just imagine. If you could see from the side the bones of Elisha and this dead man falls down on the bones of Elisha and suddenly <laughs> here are the two guys two soldiers They've just done their duty. Now they're about to run off, get away from the Syrians, and they're going to have an extra reason to run. Watch. Because the dead body hit those bones. And the next picture is God raised that man to life again. When he touched the bones of Elisha, he came to life. Can you imagine what you would do if you all at once woke up beside a skeleton? Well, here he goes. He comes out of there. Hair standing on end. And uh, these other guys, they see the dead man come to life, and I bet they do some running too. You see, even after Elisha is dead, he's still raising another dead person to life again. I like Elisha. Let's open our mouths wide. Ask God to bless us greatly. Here's a nice lesson, a big lesson I learned from the life and faith of Elisha. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. And remember, remember what Jesus said. He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. Are you hungry and thirsty to see the power of God? If you're thirsty... Come to Jesus and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, from, with, from his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. Enough blessing and power for you and for many, many others.